find the polynomial function given the following zeros. So for example one, we're provided that the zeros are two, negative one, and four. Now let's come up with a polynomial that contains these. So I'm gonna write down three factors, x minus two, x minus negative one, and x minus four. And why do we do that? Because if I solved this factor and I went off to the side and solved it, I would come up with an answer of two. So in order to achieve factor form, we're gonna write down x, subtract each one of these. So x subtract two, x subtract a negative one, which becomes x plus one, and x subtract four. All right, so now I'm gonna go start by, I'm gonna foil this, front, outside, inside, last. So multiplying the fronts, um, remember this is a positive, multiplying the outsides, the insides, and the last. And then I'm gonna combine like terms of the two terms in the middle to get x squared minus one x minus two. I'm gonna bring down the last and final factor. And I'm gonna first start by distributing the x to get x cubed minus one x squared minus two x. Now I'm gonna distribute the negative four to all three terms. Negative four x squared plus four x plus eight. And then now I'm going to write this as an equation. We have y equals combining like terms. Um, I have negative one and negative four is negative five x squared. I have negative two and positive four is positive two x plus eight. So f of x equals x cubed minus five x squared plus two x plus eight. If we graph this, we would see that the x intersects, x intercepts occur at 2, negative 1, and 4. Those are all three real solutions. Let's look at example number two. We're asked to complete the same type of task. We're going to create a function given the following zeros. So I have x subtract 3, I have x subtract the square root of 7, and x subtract negative square root of 7. Two negatives make a positive. All right, so I'm going to start by first foiling this. When I have the exact, so I have the exact fronts and I have the exact last terms, the only difference is the sign in between, I get to skip the two middle procedures because ultimately they're just going to cancel out. One would be negative square root of 7x and the other is positive square root of 7x. So let's multiply the fronts to get x squared. Let's multiply the backs. A negative times a positive is a negative. And I have a square root of seven times the square root of seven. Now the square root of seven times the square root of seven is the square root of 49. And we know the square root of 49 is simply seven. All right, now let's bring down the factor that I have not yet distributed through. And I'm gonna foil this, multiplying the fronts. Now the outsides, the insides, and the last. As I write it now in function form, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in standard form. Negative three x, oh, hold on here. This is supposed to be a cube because I have x to the first and x squared gives us x cubed. So I'm going to squeeze this in here, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x plus 20. Let's look at example. Let's look. Okay, example number three. Still the same goal in mind. We want to be able to create a function, a polynomial function, that contains the following solutions. So I'm going to start. Let me move this down. Move that out of your way by writing x subtract two plus radical five, and I'm gonna have x plus two minus radical five. Let me move this off the side one second. Okay, I'm going to start here by distributing this negative sign. So I have x subtract this quantity and x subtract this quantity. Again, x subtract always followed by what you're provided, and x subtract with what you're provided as one of the solutions. So I'm gonna distribute through to get x subtract two subtract the square root of five. Just distributing the negative three. And again, I have x subtract two plus the square root of five. Okay, so I'm gonna come up now with, I'm gonna make and distribute, I should have nine different terms when I distribute. X squared 
minus 2x plus positive square roots of 5x. And the x can go in front or back as long as it's not underneath the radical. I'm going to do the same thing with the negative 2. Negative 2x, positive 4, negative 2 square roots of 5. Okay, lastly, remember this is like a negative 1. So I have a negative 1 square root of 5. Negative times negative is a positive 2 square root of 5. And now this is a little bit trickier. A negative times an, a positive is a negative. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is just 5. So this is negative 5. Okay, is there any additive inverses? Which means they're the same thing, just different signs. So x squared is by itself. Do we have any negative 2x and negative 2x is a negative 4x? Um, here we have, um, have I missed out on anything else? I may have. I may have missed out on stuff here. Let me go back here. 